she's happy. Uh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Listen, she makes you want to cry when you look at her, don't she? When I, when, I, when I look at her, I see that the spirit of humility on her. Yeah. And that's what I love about her. Listen, you better thank God that you got a wife with the spirit of humility. You hear me? Right? Most of us got to feed our wives. Like that. I'm just joking. I'm just joking, y'all. But I, when I look at you, I see the spirit of humility and humbleness. And I thank God that we, listen, this is rough for her. And I know, listen, this, everybody goes through this season when you first come before people when you're nervous and you. So let's encourage our family. We want you to know we love you dearly. Yeah. And you mean the world to us. Yeah. And so we're looking forward to what God has. She has so much stuff in there that God has to pull out. So we're going to release Jackie today. Let's give a big hand. Amen. Yeah. 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 down and I write everything in my journal and I'm nervous so I want to start out with prayer but it's written so okay and this was my intro and it's also the prayer that I got the day after I had spoke with Chantel about speaking before you so Holy Father, I seek you. I look to you in earnest. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, show me the way. Please show me yes. the way of my work. Yes, Lord. What next? Give me the words you want me to have. Yes, Lord. Give me your words, please. Yes. Words that you want me to speak. Yes. Show me the way to speak. Yes, Lord. And show me the way to be. Yes. I repent of my laziness. I loosen my hold on earth. Yes. Its cares, its worries, even its joys. Yes, yes. I relinquish all to get the sacred significance of spiritual life. Thank you, Lord. So often I cry out for some blessing. I have such a tight hold on all these earth treasures that I want. Mm. And I have no available hand to receive your blessings, Father. Mm. I have no available hand to receive your blessings in love. A blessing is mine to take. And I sacrifice all to that. Amen. Amen. Wow. That was beautiful. And so, the title which I got last week while Pastor Patricia was speaking. Oops. I cry a lot. Excuse me. <laughs> was submit and surrender with our time. Mm. And the Holy Spirit will reveal to us to hear what he is wanting to say to us today. And it's referencing what Pastor Patricia has been saying. And Dion and Jerron. So listen with our spirit and not our emotions. Mm -hmm. We need more than an emotional boost. We need to hear with our inner man. Mm -hmm. And there is so much. I think Pastor Patricia said this last week. There's so much trench work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And I'm using the Living Bible translation. It's not a translation. It's really a paraphrase. And mm -hmm. That's really been helping me this year to understand some things. Mm -hmm. And so Proverbs 13, 4 says, Lazy people want much, but get little, while the diligent are prospering. Yes. And I, I'm fearful. This is not my comfort zone. But this, 
the amount of freedom that I will gain from being obedient. And Romans 6, 14 says, Sin need never again be your master, for now you are no longer tied to the law where sin enslaves you, but you are free under God's favor and mercy. And so we have to accept responsibility for our wrongs and confess them and ask for forgiveness. You know, we just got to own our junk, what we do. That's my favorite thing to always say to Wesley. Son, you got to own it. <laughs> <laughs> and to Wes also. And building a habit of obedience, there's a habit in that. Amen. It doesn't just come natural. Yes. Perfect is not the destination here. It's process. Yes, that's good. Obedience that's good. becomes radical the minute this desire turns into real action. Yes. So here I am, seeking to be obedient. Yes. I could have declined, but I could not disobey, not anymore in my life. Wow. Anymore. I've done good. spent... 40 something years disobeying, I can't do it anymore. I'm done with that. And 1 Samuel 15 23 says, For rebellion is as bad as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as bad as worshiping idols. And that hit me because I've always been very stubborn. And the Lord has told me that. And so. That spoke to me. And remember this. Every good thing that we will try to achieve will be met with resistance. So if we make any changes, resistance will be there. Yes. And it's not going to be easy. And I thought of every reason under the sun as to why I shouldn't go through this process. <laughs> and the thought came, oh well, just obey, period. Yes, the is. man who finds life finds it trusting God, yes, period. Don't I realize how patient he is with me? Wow. So um, back in April, I think it was the 1st of April that I um, spoke with Chantel about uh, being before you. After I spoke with Chantel, the Holy Spirit moved on me in this way. And I have written in my journal as follows. So I spoke with Chantel on Sunday. And so that Monday night, I was asleep and I listen I go to sleep I'm out in like one minute wow. and it's usually 10 30 on the dot and so it was 11 p.m. and I could not sleep and so I went and just kind of wandered around the house I don't know what I was doing and I had the thought to go back to this little devotional that I had not read yet it's an old one I love thrift stores I love books and that's where I buy them and I had bought this one. I think I paid a dime for wow. it. And the, the Holy Spirit, like, led me to go to that devotional that I had not read yet. And said, go to the day that I had spoke to Chantel about being before you. And that's when I began to receive my lesson for today. And so I went back to April 5th. And so it says, 2 Kings 4 4, thou shalt shut the door, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. They were to be alone with God, for they were not dealing with the laws of nature, nor human government, nor the church, nor the priesthood, nor even with the great prophet of God. But they must need be isolated from all creatures, from all leaning circumstances from all props of human reason wow. and swung off hanging on God alone in touch with the fountain of miracles. And here is a part in the program of God's dealings. There is a secret isolation, a chamber of isolation in prayer and faith which every soul must enter that is very fruitful. And there are times and places where God will form a mysterious wall around us and cut away all our props and all the ordinary ways of doing things and shut us up to something divine, which is utterly new and unexpected, something that old circumstances do not fit into, where we do not know just what will happen. This, is, this, was, this spoke to me. Where God is cutting the cloth of our lives on a new pattern. 
where he makes us look to himself. Wow. And re most religious people live in sort of treadmill life where they can calculate almost everything that will happen. Wow. But the soul that God leads out into immediate and special dealings, he will shut in wow. where all they know is that God has hold of them and is dealing with them and their expectation is from him alone. We must be detached from outward things and attached inwardly to the Lord alone in order to see His wonders. Yes. Really and I wrote, Thank you, Father, for you have spoken. Mm -hmm. And Job 23.10 says, but he knows every detail of what is happening to me, and when he has examined me, he will pronounce me completely innocent, as pure as solid gold. Yes. Amen. So, I had went on the first retreat, the first ladies' retreat with CU. I don't remember when that was. I know I lost track of time, but it wasn't this year. Okay. And um, I was scared. I didn't know nobody. <laughs> And my mom was, um, she had, my mother passed away, but she had dementia. And so me and my three brothers were caregiving to her during that time. And she was in full blown. And actually, when we went on the um, retreat, my mother passed away a month later. You know, and you look back and you were like, wow. But you know, I didn't know it at the time, but she was bad. And it, that was a bad situation. And I was very stressed and very skeptical, stressed, um, everything. Mm -hmm. And so we were on the retreat, and I think we were all downstairs. I don't remember if we were eating breakfast at that big table or what we were doing, but Jennifer, mm -hmm. Jennifer, <laughs> sweet Jennifer, came up to me and sat down beside me, and I didn't really know her. And she said, what makes you happy? And I said, who told you to say that? <laughs> you know, I thought it was like one of those little games where they go around asking everybody stuff. I was like, I ain't playing. <laughs> and uh, she, I think, I think she said, the Holy Spirit, or, or he did. Mm. And I was like, okay. <laughs> well, I didn't know the answer to that wow. at all except what makes me happy. I don't know was my answer. Wow. And so I know that happy means happenings around you, but the Lord started something there that day, and he used Jennifer to ask me that question because I did not know the answer. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about hobby, hobbies. Yeah. Oh, well, let's see. What makes yeah. me happy? I like to do this and that and blah, 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 you know. Yeah. And... That wasn't what he was saying at all. Yes. And so I would ask myself that question over time, over weeks mm -hmm. and days and months, and it's just turned into like a two-year thing. Wow. And um, because I had lost myself yeah. during my mom's sickness, and then wow. my home was not a good place, wow. and we were so fractured and broken. Wow. And um, I was going back and forth, running two households, me and my three brothers, Running them, too, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> but they were great, and we were all taking care of my mama, and I didn't know. You know, I just didn't know. And so I started to make write this lesson. The Lord started bringing it to me, and I looked up the root word. I love to look up root words. Okay, that's super nerdy, but I do. <laughs> and the root word for happy was an some of the derivations it gave was um, an old English word in the 14th century, and it was hap. And hap means a person's luck or lot. Wow. Mm. Okay? Lucky, favored by fortune. But this is what I like. Being in advantageous circumstances. Wow. Okay. Prosperous, turning out well. And the root word for happiness in Latin is Felix, and it means fertile. Wow. I'm like, okay. So if I'm prosperous, does that mean that I've got the car, the house, the clothes, the shoes, the 50 pocketbooks, 100 pocketbooks, the uh -huh. private lessons for the kid, the karate, the ballet, uh -huh. well, all that. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Uh, no. It, I started realizing that the Lord was trying to show me that prosperous for you is simple life. Wow. Your health. That's good. That is so your good. Your family. That's good. And you know, I was feeling like I didn't have a family anymore. My mama died. Wow. I loved her. My family was broken. I thought, well, here we go. But God was showing me that he was going to fix it. And he was showing me what he wanted me to give back to. And it was simplicity. Wow. Not That's so stuff. Good. That's so good. So good. Not, not followers. Not wow. friends. Right. Wow. Not social media, not the value of things. Wow. And so, back to the advantageous circumstance. Another, that was my favorite part of one yeah. derivation. My yeah. next one was, it just popped up and it said, happy as a clam was originally a saying from the 1700s. And I've heard that before. I don't know if any of you have ever heard that. They're just happy as a clam. And then the, the whole saying was happy as a clam in the mud at high tide. And so I started thinking about that, you know, deep in the mud, and then you got high tide, nothing's getting to that. And then the Lord started showing me, you are in advantageous circumstance. Wow. You are prosperous. Wow. It will and it does turn out well. Wow. Yes. And he told me that because you, my spirit belongs to my Holy Father. Wow. Come on. Come on. The Holy Father. Yes. How? Because my Father is a rich king, the kingdom mindset. Yes. Yes. By striving towards good character, like he told us to do at the front of this year, yes. really good. he is pleased. Now, he loves us, good or bad. Right. And he will bless us for his name's sake. Yes. Mm -hmm. But obeying his most recent command to us brings us his favor. Wow, wow, that's good. That's really good. So Micah 6, 8 says, He has told you what he wants, to be fair and just and merciful and to walk humbly with your God. Wow. So happy, now that I know the derivation of the word and I see the part of it that it is, being in advantageous circumstances Here's the next level of happy that the Holy Spirit revealed to me. So I started realizing my family made me happy. Mm. And that's the answer. That's good. God gave me in the natural, and then he gave me in the spiritual. Yes. Okay. So the first one was to love them. Okay, that's hard sometimes because them, them men's is on my nerves. <laughs> They don't do what I want them to do. How dare it. To serve them is yes. another biggie, because I was always like, I ain't serving nobody. But then the Lord started showing me to serve them. Make the coffee if he never makes you coffee. Yes. Make wow. them wash their clothes. If they don't, they, good, no, they ain't allowed to wash my clothes, but wash their clothes. Amen. The other thing that the Lord was teaching me was to be with them. Because I'm always super busy. I like getting a lot, a lot of stuff knocked out in a day. And the Lord, after my mother passed away, I use that as kind of like a timeline. He started showing me that I didn't know how to be. Mm. Wow. I didn't know how to be with them. We didn't wow. know how to be with each other wow. at all. Wow. And so he started teaching me how to be with them so and good. just listen actively. Not, And we still struggle with that. We look at our phones and stuff. But mm -hmm. really showing me that you've got to listen, even if it ain't what you want to talk about. Right. It's not what you That's want. Right. Get over yourself. Wow. That's good. And the other thing was to sup and dine with them, wow. to have meals with them, wow. to pay attention to that time. It's very important. Yes. 
and just enjoy life with them. Yes. And that became my answer. Wow. And I started to see the correlation and the message that my Holy Father was showing me about Him. Mm. My Father makes me happy wow. because through Him I am prosperous and favored. Yes. He puts me in advantageous circumstances. He created me. He is my origin. He is my original family. Wow. That's good. You know, I was never taught that. Wow, that's really wow. good. You know, we we come from God, we will go to God. Yes. yes. He is our Father. Yes. That is advantageous. Yes. yes. That's real good. So, as He told me to love them, He says to love Him, which is to keep His commandments. And then to serve Him. You know, I can get an attitude about that. I mean, really? I can get an attitude about that. I want, ooh, here they come. (laughs) Don't make eye contact. (laughs) And that's not that. He dealt with me on that. You know, your your phone blowing up with texts, and somebody's always got this, and somebody's always got that. So I had to start realizing that he was showing me how to serve him by asking how he wants me to be used, not how I want to be used. Use me, Lord. Mm. I submit myself, walking in a store, walking on my job. Mm -hmm. Use me, Lord, walking into my home. For some people, it could be walking on the treadmill at the gym. Use me as I interact with children, other people's children, my own child, grown-up, adult child. (laughs) 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 Feed on the Word. That's the being with them and supping and dining with them. Feeding on His Word. The Word. And and the music that I listen to. My music is my feed. Mm -hmm. Reading material that I read is my feed. Mm -hmm. And just like you have horse feed or dog feed or chicken, guinea pig, whatever it is you got, you know they all got their special feeds. Well, we're spiritual beings on a human journey, and we need spirit feed. Wow. And the world does not offer that. Wow. That's good. That's good. And you know for you, I know for me what it requires. And I know when I ain't doing it. Yes. And we all, we all do. Yes. We lie to ourselves. Yes, that's good. So our feed is music, word, time, time spent alone in nature, maybe in your car, on your drive, in quiet. And you ha- it goes back to it, you have to develop and cultivate the habit of doing these things. Yes. Our flesh wants to listen to what we want to listen to, do what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Watch what we want to watch. Yes. Wow. You know, just because you're old don't mean you don't want to watch stuff. Come on. Or listen to stuff. Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think young people think, I may be wrong, but oh, they're just old. They don't know anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel, I, feel, I feel like the, I literally just got out of seventh grade and now I got a bunch of bills. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So yes. we have to clean ourselves and rid ourselves of the junk so that we can hear. It's like when you go to paint something on a canvas, the canvas is raw, but for it to receive the medium that you're going to use, You have to sometimes prep the canvas. And anybody in here knows that when they paint, that's what you have to do. And sometimes you use paint or you use something called gesso and you paint it all over that canvas. And that's what we have to do. I believe that's what God is wanting to say to us here. That we got to get on it. Yes. Yeah. Our souls were not meant to go from one video to the next. Like you're reading your Bible and then you go to look up a word and the next thing you know, you're watching the shark attack. (laughs) Breaking news. A money truck heist. (laughs) 
Somebody's getting shot. And then, or my little precious angel child wants to show me 14 memes and send them to me right in a row. And the next thing I know, I'm looking at them and I'm yeah. laughing. And you're, our souls are not meant to do that in yes, a day. Yes, so it's really no good. wonder that we're overwhelmed and we can't hear him. Wow. wow. <laughs> to enjoy life with him is about accepting his truths. Wow. And so we have to accept what God has spoken about our character and living it and resisting the rebellious self, which is hard for me. Mm -hmm. Has it been? No, it's not hard for me now. It was hard for me. Yeah, amen. That old identity that I thought that I was. The real me can be revealed in who I was sent here to be. Yes. And, and that's for all of us. And yes. what does my good father have for me? Yes. And he answered simple life. Mm -hmm. Loosening your hold on earth. Wow. Loosen its cares, its worries. Yes. Even some of the joys that you're seeking after. Wow. Loosen your hold on that. Yes. I'll give you, when you loosen, I'll give you wow. what wow. you're meant to have. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, my Father will give me the real joy. I will enjoy life here and know that another life will come. And that's something that I've been praying about because I was really fearful of death. Wow. And I've been asking the Lord to help me with that and not let me be afraid to let go of this earth. Yes. And little by little, He is. That's good. Wow. And so, all my earth treasures that I held too tight to were my mama, were Wes and Wesley, my money, <laughs> my friends, yeah. my image, my success. Wow. And I found that surrendering, submitting, serving my people, letting go, not controlling them and the outcomes, yes. keeping my mouth closed. Come on. Hmm. <laughs> No fighting. Because, you know, you can say one more thing to me and both my fists go, burnt. <laughs> fists, always. And the Lord said, open your fists. No wow. fists. Wow. 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 It became easier and easier once I did it one time. Wow. Yep. And then sometimes I think, wow, now I'm a pushover. <laughs> oh, wow. But... That's, that's, that's natural. That's, that's not good. true. Yes. That's so that's good. good. Wow. So that's I must so let go that my hands can be open to receive the love and the blessings and the freedom wow. from my Father. Wow. And I strive to sacrifice all to that. And then I have another little thing that, because I started doubting myself on the happiness thing. I was like, ugh, happiness. It ain't really about happiness. Because happiness is happenings. Yes. But then the Lord showed me this in my process of getting this lesson. The key to divine happiness. Mm. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Psalm 1, 1 through 2. Today's culture is for the most part hostile to the things of God. The Western world is increasingly opposed to Christian principles. But the Bible assures that when you refuse to follow the crowd, when you don't laugh at their jokes, when you don't listen to their music, mm -hmm. when you don't adopt their sexual morals, mm -hmm. but instead meditate on the Lord's law day and night, you will be blessed. Yes. Now, what does the word blessed mean? To be blessed is to be divinely happy. Wow. wow. That's good. Jesus said that unless we pick up our cross, deny ourselves, and follow him, we can't be his disciples. Mm -hmm. He also said that we need to follow his example and resist sin, even to the point of shedding blood. Wow. This means that resisting sin is not going to be easy. Wow. Yep. Choosing to follow Jesus is the true key to happiness. Yes. So... I started thinking what my goals for that were. No social media. Mm. Except Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> Is that social media? 
No social media. Social media does something to me. It makes me angry. It makes me jealous. Wow. It makes me wow. want to kick Wes. Be like, you didn't take me to the good. <laughs> car I'm driving, I'm driving a Camry. <laughs> That's what it does to me. Yes. Yes. And it also goes back to that thing about our souls were not meant for all this inundation and looking at everybody thinking that they've got more than us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a word. <laughs> And TV. TV is an, was an issue for me, I did not realize. Yeah. And so my goals are no social media. Um, I shoot for no TV. I only listen to prophetic music. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that anybody in here needs to do what I'm doing. I'm just telling you what I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, no secular music, because music affects me so deeply yeah. instantaneously. Wow. I mean, instantly. Wow. Yep. And my reading material, I love to read. I have a book issue. I've got issues with books. I love books. <laughs> and but my reading material it only needs to lead me deeper into God's word and his knowledge. That's right. That's good. That's right. This is how I'm trying to be a clean canvas so I can hear. Wow. So I can know. Wow. And this took me a few weeks to piece all this together. <clears throat> and I was cleaning a house the other day and I was raised Baptist. And I know some of you probably can relate. So we used to sing all those old hymns. I don't particularly like those that much anymore, but some of those hymns can really speak. And there's tons of them just buried inside me because I listen to them always. And I was mopping, and the Lord spoke to me and said, put this in. And it was the one... This, the hymn, I think it's called Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. And so it's just a chorus in a, in a verse, and it says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. The strangely dim part is true, because I'm doing it. Yes. Things have become yes. strangely dim, and I don't even care yes. anymore. That's Amen. Right. That's right. Wow. And his word, that's it. That's the key. we got to get in that word. Mm -hmm. We've got to know what he says. We've got to ask for the revelation of the word. Yes. Right. And it's true, when we take these things away, they will grow strangely dim, and we forget about them. Jeremiah 29, 12 through 13 says, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Seize the word and do not let anything else in. Wow. we got to quit all this, letting all this mess in. Yes, that's good. Yes. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God uh -huh. yes. stands forever. Yes. Isaiah 48. Wow. Seek me while I may be found. Don't be so intoxicated by this world right. wow. That's right. that you can't see or hear what God is speaking. Yes. And as Pat Pastor Patricia says, increase your seek. Yes. He will keep the imperfect peace, all those who trust him, whose thoughts turn off into the Lord, Isaiah 26, 3. And the music thing, going back to that, um, I have a little testimony about that. When I was little, uh, my brothers, I have three older brothers, and my oldest brother's 12 years older than me, then 11, then 8 years older than me. So I was pretty little, hanging around those teenagers, and they were all musically inclined, and they played guitars. And so I was raised... In the middle bedroom was like the music room. It was somebody's bedroom, but there was always amps and stuff sitting around. Mm -hmm. And we had record players. Okay, so yeah, you know how long it was. Been. <laughs> <laughs> and so they had record players, and they would play the music, and then they would do their practicing by the music. And so I, I, my whole life, I just remember Led Zeppelin music. Wow. My brothers played Led Zeppelin music all the time because that's what they practiced to. Wow. And up until about two years ago, that's what I heard. I'm, I'm 48. 
That's what I heard in my sleep was Led, wow. Led Zeppelin lyrics. Wow. Still. Wow. Till I came here wow. and learned about our subconscious and our wow. soul and wow. our spirit. And I, I would hear that stuff in my sleep. Wow. And then one day I would happen to be talking to one of my other brothers. And he said, you know, I do that too. Wow. It's not the power. That's... What I'm saying is there's power wow. in this spoken word, yes. Yes. whether it's music, whatever yes. wow. it is, yes. and we have to guard ourselves against wow. this stuff. Yes. Philippians 2.14 says, In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing, so that no one can speak a word of blame against you. You are to live clean, innocent lives as children of God in a dark world full of people who are crooked and stubborn. Shine out among them like beacon lights holding out to them the word of life. Wow. And did you know that your brain will constantly rewire itself to suit the information that you feed it? Wow. If you constantly complain, gossip, find excuses, etc., it, the brain, will make it much easier to find things to be upset about, wow. regardless of what is happening wow. around you. Wow. Likewise, if you constantly search for opportunities, abundance, love, and things to be grateful for, it will make it much easier to find a reflection of those things around you. Wow. Yeah. It takes practice, wow. but over time, this is a very powerful way to reshape your reality. Mm -hmm. I say it's a way to re to shape your spiritual atmosphere. Yeah. Everybody's good. got one. Yeah. So it's like you get in my atmosphere, and I'm going to be like, hmm. Right, right, right. <laughs> wow. Right, right, right. But it's true. We all have a spiritual atmosphere. And how we, what do we, what's in our atmosphere? That's good. So we don't rely on luck or chance. Mm -hmm. We rely on knowing our God leads us. But we got to do our work. Right. You know, like, I love that show. I don't think she comes on anymore. I yawn, love, fix my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I loved her. I used to think, oh, God, if somebody called her on us, we would all be dead. <laughs> Now, not now. We'd be, we'd be okay, I guess. But I used to think, I love how she would tell everybody, you've got to do your work. And I, at first, when I started watching her, I'm like, what's the work? What's she talking about? And I realized now what the work is. You've got to look within. Quit lying to yourself. With, wow. And I say for us, the church, it is putting in the word, building your spiritual atmosphere, the relationship. Uh, with your God, with your Father. Okay, so like me and Wes, we have a relationship. My husband, mm -hmm. I know Wes and Wesley. Wes is the dad. And so, <laughs> um, if we don't put in, you know, it's not going to work. Right. Wow. It's That's just good. not. Relationships, you have to work at them. So why, we've got to work at this relationship with our Father. Mm -hmm. He works at it for us. We're in covenant, which is an agreement. Right. So we've got to do our work. Wow. And we, we, his revela we don't rely on luck or chance, and we must know his values. Just like our earthly parents teach us their values, whether spoken or model behavior, we know what our mama's value or our dad's value wow. And those become our values. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so to know our Father's values, we have to read the Word and do things that will lead us into learning them. Yeah. And they become our values then. His values become our values. Let me read another little thing out of a book. A Eugenia Price, she's an author. I think she's a Southern author, and she writes things about history, historical fiction. Mm -hmm. But she also wrote a few uh, books that were very spiritual, and this is something from one of her books that I'm reading recently. It says, True spiritual freedom involves the inner man, the inner woman. There is no quick, painless way. And it is not an achievement. It is a gift. Wow. wow. A gift which most of us are in the process of learning to receive. Yeah. Yep. It is ready for us, prepared before the foundation of the world as the Lamb was. Wow. But God being God must first be able to trust us with the freedom. Wow. We can get bogged down with trying to find it. Wow. Wow. 
We don't find it. It's a gift God gives, not all at once. It's not in a package. He gives it as he knows we can handle it. And God is never early and never late. And I used to tell Wesley when he was little, I would say, you know, God just gives us stuff all along. But like, if he give it to you all right now, son, you just lay on the floor and flop. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. He gives it a little at a time. Yeah. And in closing, I challenge everyone here and myself. I'm preaching to me. Yeah. Not even preaching. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> to me. Preaching to <laughs> yourself. I am saying these things to myself. <laughs> Seek more. Cut out something. Simplify even more. Yes. Because you know what I learned with my mother leaving earth? Not one thing. Not one thing. She didn't carry not one thing with her. And she had a lot of material value. Things that she valued. And it's so short. Like I said, I feel like I just came out of seventh grade. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And here I am, almost half a century old. Right. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, just know that we got to get on it. Wow. Yes. I got to get on it. Yes. But know that in His words, we are protected. Deepen your seek. Do your work. Dig deeper. Work on your relationship with your Holy Father. Yes. Ask. Ask for revelation of the Word. Yes. Pray Scripture out loud into your being, into your atmosphere. Yes. Good. Remember, obedience becomes radical the minute this desire turns into real action. Wow. Lord, what are you asking me? Show me. And... I had two more scriptures, Mark 10, 29. And Jesus replied, Let me assure you that no one has ever given up anything, a home, brother, sisters, mother, father, children, or property, for love of me and to tell others the good news, who won't be given back. A hundred times over. Wow. Mm. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and land. Wow. With persecutions. Wow. Isaiah 35, 8. I love this. I didn't know this was in here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> And it says, and a main road will go through the once deserted land, and it will be named the Holy Highway. Wow, wow, wow. No evil-hearted men may walk upon it. Wow. God will walk there with you. Wow. <laughs> Even the most stupid cannot miss the way. Wow. <laughs> no line will lurk along its course, nor there will be any dangers. Only the redeemed will travel there. Wow. These, the ransomed of the Lord, will go home along that road to Zion, singing the songs of everlasting joy. For them all sorrow and all sighing will be gone forever. Only joy and gladness will be there. Yes. Wow. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Be ready. He will show you if you ask Him. Knowing your Father puts you in advantageous circumstances. Mm. We will all be happy as clams in the mud at high tide. Yes. Safe in the arms of our maker. We cannot, when we're there, be dug up and eaten by predators. Mm. Wow. And back in October, I had really forgotten that, I had, that the Holy Spirit had given me this. So it was October 2022. We are in 2022, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, I don't even know why or who I sent this to or how. I texted it. And it was in my text. It was some little folder. And so I was going along just the other day, and the Holy Spirit reminded me, look that up and read that. And so I think I may have texted it to Wesley. I don't know. 
But anyway, it's called Our Bodies Are Literal Temples. And the Holy Spirit gave me this. I could not write this myself. And it said, Think of a beautiful, godly edifice, a building. How much serenity and beauty when it's first built, like an infant baby. Clean, pure, whole, precious. But as years pass, what is allowed into the temple? Its beauty is violated. It's marred. Scars are left on the temple. Holes in the wall, graffiti on everything. The purity is saturated in the literal sewage of the land that the temple sits in. Music, food, sex, relationships are all like violent men who come in in fits of rage and they just destroy the beautiful temple that was created for wholeness or holiness. Because holiness is wholeness. Once they are told to leave, they will do like renters do. They will defecate in every toilet and smear their feces on the walls and bust up everything they can out of rage. Wow. No one tells them to go. They are rebels who can't stand to be commanded, so they will do all they can to destroy on the way out. The temples are us. The rebels are demons. We invited them in. Once they're there, we're sorry that they're there, but we don't know how to get them out. Then we hear that only the maker of the temple has the authority to rid them. Yes. Wow. The engineer that constructed the place, only he can rid them. Wow. But then we doubt the builder. Wow. 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 We ain't met him in person yet, so we think maybe because we haven't, he can't, he won't, or maybe he isn't even real. Wow. The hinge to him coming to throw them out is this. Stand back and shut your mouth. Wow. I'll fix it, but you've got to follow my lead. Yes. Wow. That's really good. Oh, my goodness. Let me do all the talking. Yes. And that sounds good until it bristles us up. <laughs> yeah. Who does he think he is? Wow. Hmm. I can throw these punks out on my own. <laughs> He ain't the boss of me or this temple. I got this. It's not so bad. And what's a little mess? I can patch these holes, and who cares? It's just a building. And who said it's a temple anyway? Wow. Wow. Until our rebel within is dead, your temple won't be fixed. It's a process. Process. Trust the builder, the engineer, and he knows what to do. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. And that's all I have. Wasn't that an awesome word?